Today, we're talking about voice assistants, the most powerful tool and the first product that you should be buying when starting a smart home. We're gonna first dive into what actually is a voice assistant, and from there, we're gonna look at the three major brands and what they have to offer in their voice assistants. Let's jump into the video right now. Before we dive into the three different brands that offer voice assistants, I wanna first start talking about what exactly a voice assistant is and what it does for you in your household. You've probably heard of the voice assistants called Alexa or HomePod or even Google Home. Those are the three major brands that we're gonna cover later in the video. But like I said, first, let's talk about what a voice assistant actually is. Simply put, a voice assistant is an assistant powered by voice. What they offer to you is the ability to give a voice command and then take that information and using AI technology, give you back a response, or they can even issue a command through different automations and routines. Let's talk about the five main functions of what a voice assistant does for you. Now, the first one and the biggest one that people tend to use their voice assistant for is general information retrieval. This is things like having it read the weather for you on a daily or weekly basis. You can get news updates from your favorite news article, or you can know when the next big game is. There are so many things that a voice assistant can do for you because really the internet information is at the tips of your fingers through a simple command. The second job of a voice assistant is task automation. These are things like scheduling appointments, reminding you to make phone calls, or even managing a to-do list for you. All of this is simply done, again, by just giving a voice command. The third job of a voice assistant is entertainment. This can be things like music, which a lot of us tend to do. The other one could be listening to your favorite audiobook. I don't know about you, I'm a big Audible person, I love to listen to books, and our voice assistants have the ability to read those books to us. The fourth job, of a voice assistant is shopping and commerce solutions. What I love about my Alexa is sometimes when my favorite products come onto sale, she'll actually give me a notice and ask if I'd like to purchase that item now or just add it to my cart to be able to review later. Most of the voice assistants have the ability to do shopping for us simply by letting us know that something's on sale. Now the fifth job of a voice assistant, which tends to be one of the biggest reasons why I encourage you to get one, is through its smart home control. Now what it does for us through smart home is it gives you a platform to be able to run automations, routines, or just set up various commands to do tasks through the smart home app. Now to review, the five main jobs of a voice assistant are one, general information retrieval, number two, task automation, number three is entertainment, four, shopping and commerce solutions, and then lastly, smart home control. The first device I wanna talk about is Amazon's Alexa, also known as the Echo or the Echo Dot. There are multiple variations of these and I'm gonna cover the latest generations of what's available. The first one is the Echo Dot. This dot, which is the smaller version, you can see it fits in the palm of my hand here, is currently retailing for $49.99. You can purchase it in three different color variations. You can also purchase an option for children. There is a dragon or even a really cool owl. We've actually purchased the owl version for our daughter, it has hers in her room, which came with Amazon Kids. There's some special and unique features that come along with those. The other version of the Echo that you're gonna see is this bigger version. This is a generation four. The Echo Dot right now is generation five. The Generation 4 Echo, which is a big one, you can see how, how much bigger it is in my hand comparatively. The Echo comes with a bigger subwoofer, bigger speakers, as well as the Zigbee features built directly into this device, giving you the capability to run a lot of local devices directly from this. This one retails at $54.99 currently. They do normally go for 
$99.99. So you might want to purchase one now if you're looking to pick one up. I highly recommend this being the first one that you purchase. There's a lot of other features built into it as well, which are things like the occupancy sensor or the glass breaking sensors that here for glass, it, glass breaking. You also have the capability for temperature built into these devices. And the, the version 5 one also has these same features built in. They just lack the Zigbee sensor built into those. Those are the differences really between the, the four and the five right now. Now, the other options that you have available to you are the Echo Show, which the Echo Show is basically a speaker with a screen built on top of it. What these ones offer is some really cool features when you start getting into cameras and you have security cameras or even a doorbell. When somebody presses your doorbell, it gives you the capability to have that device immediately call up that camera so that you can see who's at your door to with you and you can start talking to them directly from that device. These devices are really great to be used in a kitchen setting because you can also have Alexa pull up various recipes for you so you can see it directly on the screen and follow step-by-step -step guides on how to make dinner or breakfast, whatever it is you might be making at that time. Now, one of the really great things about Alexa that everybody loves about them so much is their routines that they have. Alexa offers a little bit more, I wouldn't call it an open source technology, but it does offer the ability to anybody, for anybody to create. The skills built into the Alexa platform can be a variety of things. It could be ways to stream your favorite music or audiobooks, or even the ability to listen to podcasts from the Apple platform versus the other podcast platforms available. They also offer different games to play. I have ones where I can ask Alexa for a riddle, or maybe you can ask her for a trivia game so that when you have friends over, you have various things, and it's a answer and response back and forth with the device, and you can play a ton of different games with this. Now, one of the most common features that I actually end up using with my Alexa is the ability to combine the different speakers throughout my home. As I've mentioned previously, I have an Echo in almost every single room of my house. For instance, this big one sits in the living room of my house. It is the largest space that also bleeds into my kitchen space. I only have two Alexas in my downstairs space, so I have the ability to, if I'm only going to be staying downstairs for a while, to ask Alexa to play music in the downstairs group. What that does for me is it connects the Alexa in my living room and the Alexa in my dining room on the opposite end of the house and allows them to play the same song. And you can even do this with audiobooks across both the devices. So no matter where I'm moving throughout the downstairs of my house, I still can be able to hear what music is playing. Hey everyone, it's Ian with IntelliHomes here. I hope you're enjoying the video. I just wanted to take a quick moment and ask you to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying this video, or if you haven't subscribed yet and you're enjoying this content and you wanna learn more about smart homes, then this is the right place for you and I'd love it if you'd subscribe and share this video with your friends. Thank you so much. We'll get back to the video now. Now the second brand of devices I wanted to talk about was Apple and their HomePod. I'm a huge Apple fan. Though after looking into the HomePod and this hefty price tag that it offers, this is partly why I still chose to go with the Alexa platform. Apple's HomePod mini starts at $99 each. Moving up to their HomePod, which is $299 each. Now the HomePod boasts five beautiful colors that I honestly would love to get into. Though again, their platform does not have all of the devices that the Alexa platform has to offer when it comes to connectivity. Apple's HomeKit platform, which is also what connects to the HomePod, is very limited on what it has to offer. There are a lot of devices that cannot connect to HomeKit. And part of this just has to do with Apple and their heightened level of security. So whenever you're purchasing a new smart device, always check the box to verify that it works with HomeKit. Overall, most of the voice assistants are gonna do a lot of the same things for you. At the end of the day, it's gonna come down to two things. Which platform do you like using and what does your budget look like? The Google and Alexa platforms tend to be a little bit easier on your pocket, whereas the Apple platform tends to be a little bit more expensive, but we all know how Apple is with their devices. 
they do create quality. One of the coolest features that I actually really do like about the HomePod mini is the capability to automatically connect to Apple TV. So if you have Apple TV in your home like I do, the Apple TV has the ability to automatically recognize HomePods that are in your room, connect to them, and create a surround sound style experience inside that area. The HomePods also have the same feature to be able to connect the speakers across multiple rooms so that you're listening to the same music or audiobook or even podcast throughout your entire home whenever you're going about your business throughout your day. The last brand of devices I'd like to look at is Google, and this is Google Home. Google Home has two major devices. They have their Nest Mini as well as their Nest Audio. The two big differences is their Nest Mini is really designed to be more like Alexa's Echo Dots from previous years. It's a very small form factor device which just gives you voice interaction with your smart home. If you'd like to level up and go into the audio space where you can listen to music at a better level, then they have the audio version. The Nest Mini starts at $49.99, so $50, and their audio starts at $99.99, $100. Google Home and Alexa tend to be very similar into the way they operate. They wanted to create a user-friendly experience that anybody could utilize their platform to be able to integrate their smart home into. At the end of the day, it's really gonna come down to personal preference, whether you choose Alexa or Google Home. One of the things I do really love about Google is that they offer devices that they have natively created that integrate into their ecosystem very seamlessly. Alexa or Amazon and Apple didn't create as many devices, whereas they put it more onto the user environment to create these devices. So more of a third party type system. Now Google doesn't necessarily push those devices to be the only ones to work. They wanted to create an ecosystem where anybody could create devices. Google also offers a screen version called the Nest Hub. The Nest Hub is very similar to the Echo Show, but only retails at $99.99, which gives you a screen capability. Now this screen is fairly small for only $100, whereas the Echo Show at $250 has a very large screen, around 10 inches. This breaks into a whole lot more capabilities for a very good price. Overall, Alexa and Google Home, as I've said, are very similar both in how they function as well as their pricing strategy. Both of them wanted to create an easy to enter market for their smart home capabilities. Let's take a quick minute and review what we've talked about over these three devices. Alexa and Google Home, as I've said, tend to be the most similar when it comes to both price and functionality. Whereas Apple, as we all know, tends to, co to lean more towards their high quality functions and security, but comes with a heftier price tag. Now, as I've mentioned, there's only three major brands that actually most people talk about but you can actually go out and find voice assistants that have been created by third-party companies that function completely separate from the way these ones do. I'm not gonna dive into all of those today because that is way too much to get into. My goal here is to create an easier to access smart home market for the average user. What I found on my journey getting into smart homes was how difficult and confusing it was to understand the different devices and how to get started in a smart home. If you wanna understand the basics of walking through what you should be looking at when you're purchasing your first smart home devices, check out my guide on which devices to purchase and in which order. If you don't know what a smart home is, I've also got a video for you as well. I really thank you for taking the time to walk through what a voice assistant is, as well as what are the three major brands that offer some of the best voice assistants on the market. I'll link as much as I can down in the description below and if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me. I'm always happy to talk about it so that I can help you on your smart home journey. I know I've already asked you before, but if you've enjoyed this video, please take a moment to give me a like, subscribe if you wanna learn more about smart homes and work on your journey to becoming a smart home expert. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.